Thank you. Committee members, uh, we will be going right to uh, 169 Wise Road. Um, the city will not be doing a presentation because they did that at our last meeting. Okay, Mr. Chair, you are now live. Okay, thank you very much. It's uh, Wednesday, July 14th, 2021 at 4.30. Welcome to the Design Advisory Committee special meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order. First item of business is to approve the minutes for June 9th, 2021. Does anybody have any comments? Hearing none, I'm gonna step down as chair briefly and pass it over to the vice chair. I have two items to, to adjust. The first thing I'd like to do is just uh, recognize uh, there was an error in the attendance. It was uh, Alex Kotrak was not actually not. Alex Kotrak was uh, actually not at the meeting uh, and it shows there that he was in attendance. And uh, the second item is on um, page four. Under item 9.1.2, I'd say this is the fifth paragraph. The paragraph starts in response to a question from the committee, Solomon advised that the elevators are not governed by municipal bylaws, so on and so forth. The last sentence is what I'd like to change. Right now, the sentence says, in this instance, the developer chose one elevator, which the design team deemed sufficient. I'd like to replace that sentence. Uh, in my view, I think we recognize that according to the bylaws, it was the minimum allowed and we acknowledge that, but I think we were kind of in recognition that this should be more than one because there's a lot of families in here. So I would change that sentence as follows. In this instance, the developer, developer chose one elevator, which the design team acknowledged met the minimum bylaws, but that we thought there should be more than one. And I agree. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that put that forward, Mr. Vice Chair, to you. <laughs> okay, can I get a motion to uh, approve those meeting minutes okay. with the uh, the changes? I shall move. Ted and the seconder. I can second, Elizabeth. Thanks. Approved then, so back to you, Ted. Mm -hmm. I think we need a vote, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know. Can I get a vote then? Everyone say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Okay, we'll pass back to me. Back to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item number three is the approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. Does anybody have any suggestions for changes or are we happy with the order? Hearing nothing, can I have a motion to accept the order of business as documented in the agenda? Moved. Moved by Jonathan, second. Aye, Christina. Seconded by Christina. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Very none, the motion carries. The, the order carries. Item four was business arising out of the minutes. There were none. Item five was the call for declaration of conflicts of interest. Does anybody have a, a, a conflict to declare? No, hearing none, we'll move on to item six. This is a deferred business from our last meeting on June 9th, 2021, case 23056, level three site plan approval for 169 Wise Road in Dartmouth. Uh, last meeting, the city went through the presentation for us. And we decided that the renderings, it's, it's actually documented quite clearly in the minutes that the renderings didn't match the drawings as well as we'd liked. And we found that we needed more information to, to provide feedback on it. So we deferred business and here we are today. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. The presentation has been done. Um, and I guess we'll go to asking questions. On the line, we've got Claire Tews, the planner on the file, gonna answer questions on behalf of the city. And we have uh, on behalf of the Developer, we have Saeed Sarkashi from Parsco Engineering and Construction and Greg Johnston from Scary Architects. They're available to ask, answer questions. So I'll leave it to open the floor to the team, to the committee to ask any questions that they may have. Okay. 
Okay, I guess I'll go first then. Um, first question for the uh, architect, I guess, is the rooftop meant to be accessible at all? Someone there? So is anybody uh, from Parsco or Scary Architects available to answer a question, or if not, Claire? I can actually answer that question. Um, originally, when they applied, there was an interpretation that uh, if uh, if a building exceeded their maximum height, um, they, they're allowed to have certain exemptions. Um, but where the building hasn't exceeded a maximum height, then the exemptions don't apply. Um, and it's, it's sort of in a situation where perhaps the building height maximum is like 90 meters, but they're only at 20 meters. If you have a penthouse, it, it wouldn't necessarily um, be exempt, but uh, that wasn't how the center plan team had intended for the, the legislation to be applied. So um, we've now adopted the new interpretation, which is anything that's listed in that table of exemptions, uh, I think it's table eight, but don't quote me on it. Um, we can now we can now use it as exemption and, and it won't uh, push them into the next building type classification. So in this case, this is a tall mid rise building. Uh, the original review with the penthouse uh, made it a, a high rise building. Um, now with the new interpretation, they can have a penthouse and it won't bump them into the high rise category and impact you know their setbacks and uh, other requirements. So we've uh, provided that information to the applicant and. Uh, it's up to them whether or not they want to put a penthouse back uh, into the proposal. I see they've just joined the meeting though, so they can probably speak to that better. Thanks. Thank you, Claire. Hi, how are you today? Hi. Good, thank you very much. No worries, no worries. Uh, yes, of course, in the next phase, uh, we will uh, we'll design the building the way the, way the, the, the roof is gonna be accessible, yeah. That's so it will be accessible? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, just my main comment was um, about the, the green roof, um, which is a common thing for us. It's just uh, anything that isn't accessible should be covered with the sedum. So we'll probably just make that recommendation later. But if there's going to be an accessible penthouse, then um, then that's fine too. Yeah. So we previously had it accessible and then we changed it to, to just HRM comments. And then now we will go back and make it make it accessible again. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, this is Greg Johnston. I'm on the uh, call as well right now. Okay. You're the architect. Do you have anything to add? Uh, at this moment, no, I, I don't. Um, I, to be honest, have been hired about. Uh, earlier this week. So I'm going through the plans uh, with you guys as, as well. Um, but we'll look at uh, uh, the possibility of um, adding a, a rooftop um, accessible to the, uh, for the tenants. Um, but uh, as of right now, I haven't heard of anything, any plans for, uh, for that to happen. Okay, I think we've covered that one off. Uh, further questions from you, Jonathan? If not, we can move on to uh, Christina. Yeah, just um, two things. First off, in those new renderings you provided, there's uh, the words cultural artifact written on right on the corner. And I'm just curious what that's meant to be. Hi, Jonathan, do you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, there's gonna be a great sign which is related to the owner culture, uh, which uh, we wish to have that sign exactly uh, close to the uh, building. It's gonna be a, um, a um, you know, traditional uh, sign for that building. It's gonna be installed there later. Basically, the name of the building gonna be- uh, Yeah, it's on kind of the name of the building with the nice, you know, uh, cultural things around that, yeah. Um, and then I, I touched on this and this was part of the reason why we didn't feel the renderings uh, were 
up to snuff uh, from the first meeting. Um, but I'm just curious about your reasoning why each side of the building looks different. There's no uniformity, like you have these different patterns in the facade um, and each one seems to be completely unique and don't speak to one another. Just wondering what the reason is behind that. The, the gray color in between yeah. the walls, you mean? Yeah. yeah, it was just, you know, as I told you, you know, last meeting, uh, it was intentional just to make it different, you know, when you have a look at the building from each side, it was just for thought on that to make it uh, a little bit it's mostly better. Just So we didn't want to drive like a, a really boring feeling to look at. We just wanted to distinguish a portion exactly at the mid center of this uh, visions uh, with different color. And we just thought the gray color maybe, uh, you know, sounds better than, you know, other color like orange or something like that. Yeah. That's what yeah, I yeah. I, I have no issue with the, with the color choice to me. It's just, it's odd that like in the back, it looks very clean, which is the strip. Um, and on the side and front, it looks kind of confused oh, yeah. with the, the two blocks and the, the yeah. diagonal. And, and I don't really understand yeah. any reason behind that and why yeah. it might be that way. The other reason in uh, the long pleasant district, we have something like a stagger, you know, color, uh, gray color in that. It's because of the having a stagger, you know, um, uh, cantilever there. For example, in uh, some floors, we have uh, uh, projected cantilevers there, and for in the above floor, we don't have any. So that's why we just stack the gray color just to cover and uh, dismiss this, you know, uh, this kind of uh, unit. Uh, unit something like can, sorry, can you explain that there's a cantilever? Uh, I mean, the balconies, the balconies can be oh, okay. projected, you know, uh, two feet, uh, you know, over the building. So, in right. some floors, we have no, can, you know, balconies. Uh, for example, in uh, second floor, uh, we don't have. And sure. the fourth floor, again, we have. So, in the third floor, we just try to, you know, uh, just uh, cover it with something else. That's why we have decided to put a different color to... Um, you know, just make it uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um. But on the Georgia Street, if you have, a, if you see the uh, the renderings for the Georgia Street, it's all the way uh, from top to the bottom. It's right. Gray. You know, it's there is no you know uh, stagger or something. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, my last question uh, to do with landscape, uh, just around the building, you guys have uh, sod uh, prescribed, I guess, between the sidewalk and the, uh, the building. And I, this is meant to become a fairly urban area. Uh, and I don't know if, if that's the right place for just a piece of grass. I think it would be much better uh, if it was a properly landscaped area. Um, with shrubs and bushes and that sort of thing. Um, more so just a comment, but. Sure. Yeah, that's a good comment. That's good. Yeah. That's it for me. Okay. Make an, we'll make a note of that, Jonathan, about, uh, um, what's this you said? Adding sedum and then about uh, the sod for a possible motion. Okay, Christina, you were next. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I was uh, paying attention to what you submit, and I was very interested about how is the building organization by floors. Unfortunately, when you get to the units, is not is is very just schematic. In other words, we have no idea how many washrooms do you have, where is the kitchens, and so on. So I just want to point out a particular situation that to me is a bit hard to understand, which is a, a two bedroom unit between level floor and level, level four and level seven. Um, you have no designation for that, but I can tell you that is a unit that um, will have uh, 1,015 square feet. 
and you have a very, very long room. As you can see, as, as far as I can see, my plan is just a very long room. And I believe in there you will have a living room, a kitchen, washrooms. And, and I don't understand in such a narrow organization, how is natural light going to be provided in this unit? Um, other situations such as the unit in the corner, um, uh, there is no sense where can, you can place a washroom there because it's an L shape and there is not much space there. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is that it's very difficult for us to analyze your units, having into account how schematic they are. So maybe more information because the depth of some units are quite complex. So I would like to have more information on that. The second thing, if you in the future plan to include an extra um, top, um, you know, another house on the top floor, which will be the staircase and how will that be done? I believe the, the slab has to be open. Uh, how do you imagine that to be done, that addition to be done in the future? Sure. Um, so basically this design you see is, is not a, is not a uh, it's just a phase two design, it's just a schematic design. And uh, in regarding to that uh, two bedroom unit you were talking about, we will need some communication rooms and uh, janitor rooms and those kind of rooms, which uh, some portion of that uh, two bedroom unit can be used for it. Can you follow, or you, can you follow me? No, not really. So Can basically, you... yeah, yeah, we need uh, we need some com uh, communication room as well as electrical room in in each floor. Yes. Which uh, uh, some portion of that two bedroom one plus ten unit can be used for that area for that that reason. So that will be common areas, technical areas for the full floor, not to that unit. So that unit does not have a thousand fifteen square feet, does it? It might have it, but there is there is possibility to use some of that area for other purposes. Yeah, we are talking about the possibility to change it to uh, you know uh, split to uh, two three uh, required you know um, spaces. Yes, I'm trying to understand because in your plans are so schematic that we have no idea where is the kitchen, where is the washroom. We understand the small squares, they look like bedrooms. I'm assuming they are bedrooms. Yes, yes correct. Yeah. But, but that's not sufficient for us to understand where do we enter the flat, where is the door of the flat, and where, how is the flat organized? Yeah, probably you should look at the uh, at the design after it's finished. It's not uh, this is concept design, so basically. You know, okay, but it's it's very it's hard for us to based on, the, based on the requirements of the uh, the center plan uh, requirements. For this pre-application, we have just asked to provide the, with the exterior. You know uh, what does it the, the uh, exterior wall looks like. And that's why we just um, put some bedroom which required to have a window and the balcony doors, you know, uh, and uh, it, will set, it will be satisfied in the, you know, uh, the uh, construction design for sure. Uh, I'm sorry, yes. but I disagree. I'm an architect and you just don't submit facades to be approved having into account that you will solve an interior that in my point of view is gonna be very hard. Yes, so yes. I could only assume that your facade is perfect if you show me the interior and I will understand the amount of natural light you will have in a certain space, right? Because yes. with that depth, with just a single uh, window, you will not have sufficient light inside. So the balcony, it's very nice in your facade, but with that depth of that unit, you might have a unit that is not legal. So, I mean, I mean, pay attention to that because I don't know how many subdivisions will you have in the rest of that depth, for example. 
So I cannot approve something if that doesn't correspond to the, an interior and is, uh, is, is a good dwelling in a way because people are going to live there. So I would like right. to understand where things will be there. So, uh, so as I explained, this is not the final design. So you're looking at, so basically okay. probably uh, you should ask uh, them to put their, uh, in their requirements for center plan. That's right. That's right. This is the, just the next step after this is to get into more detailed design. Yeah. Okay. Love okay. It's Ted here. Um, we have two people from the city who have some comments. So I'll let them go in. Claire, Sean. Hi, uh, Chairman, to the member of the panel. The land use bylaw doesn't cover this in the review. Uh, it's not part of the center plan requirements on the unit layouts. Uh, there's just requirements for two bedroom, one bedroom units and the design of the building. So that's what our review has been done and that's been provided to the committee. There is more to come with a construction permit where the building official will look at this and review it and determine if it meets the building code. And that will happen after we go through the committee and after the appeal period is over. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we uh, will have to leave it at that. That's not to say, Christina, that you can't, as you have in the past, come up with some suggestions, some very good suggestions on layout, which would be useful for the people who are gonna end up living in these places, because uh, that's one of the things that we do. We do make some recommendations that are a little bit outside of our, our scope. So we'll continue to do that, but we can address that when we get to the motion stage. That's right, and, and we're, you know, I was just hired this week, but I'm just looking at the schematics myself. So, you know, I have some concerns with the uh, party walls and unit layout or what could be the unit layouts themselves. So there will probably be some push and pull with some of the uh, party walls and um, to uh, get it to be um, where we want it to be. So um, the unit layouts are gonna be very important for the success of the building. So we're gonna, we'll take that very seriously. Thank you, Greg, I appreciate that. Do you have further questions, Christina? Yes, I had the question about the possible um, inclusion of an extra floor on the on the on the top floor. How will that connection be done? Because um, so just to let us know what how is the accessibility? So I think you have to to bring up some staircases, uh, will the elevator will go up? Because I, I see some difficulties here. So that's why I would like to understand it better. You mean uh, the roof to be accessible? Uh, it, it, you mentioned that in the future, you might have a penthouse there. Not necessarily it's going to be penthouse, so we will make, uh, we will make the, uh, uh, the roof accessible. You will make the roof accessible, but um, you are considering to have the staircase to go to the roof at this point or not? Yes, yeah. yes correct. Yeah. Okay, and which one will that be? Most likely it's going to be the, the one behind the elevator shaft. Okay, so I, I make an advice that will be included in your proposal too, because it's quite important to have that possibility. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay, and Christina, I'd say while we're going through this, if you can come up with specific words for these two recommendations to go into the I motion. I, I will definitely. Thank you. Further questions or we can go on to Alex and Elizabeth and myself. No. I've got a few questions, but I'd like to go let Alex and Elizabeth have their chance first. Uh, so I just had a couple things. Uh, first, I just wanted to clarify. So is cultural artifact the name of the building or like a provisional name for the building? Uh, sorry, can you please say that again? I, I didn't get that. Sorry, is cultural artifact the name of the building? Yeah, it's going to be the main, the name of the building going to go, go on that, uh, yeah, that thing. Okay. And then uh, the other thing, um, I was wondering just from the renderings, there's a lot of surfaces where like there's a 90 degree angle where it will be stone tile on one plane and then white brick on another, for example. Um, and I'm just wondering on the corners, uh, is there any way to address 
sort of those transitions or seams, just because it seems like there's a lot of places where in the rendering, it it makes sense as like a two dimensional surface, but in reality, those are going to be like bricks oh. and stones. Oh, yeah. But how yeah. are those corners going to work? Yeah, yes, correct. You're right. Yes. Uh, so is there going to be some sort of like bracing or uh, are they just cut so that it's a perfect seam or how does that work? Which one do you look at? Uh, so for example, like the townhouse entrances where um, like it's, it's sort of like white brick wall and then there's a 90 degree angle where one side is stone and one side is brick. Yeah, uh, do you mean the corner? Uh, yes. Transition from uh, the white color uh, break to the stone? Uh, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We, uh, you know, in the construction design, we will uh, provide a bit uh, more detail to this transaction, uh, but uh, to the transition, sorry. But uh, right now, we just uh, try to, um, you know, distinguish the uh, different color for uh, different space. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I got your point on that. Great, thanks. That was it for me. Thanks. Okay, uh, Elizabeth. Hi. Um, so maybe somebody from the city can clarify this. It just seems that last week we weren't really able to, like the submission was unclear. And so we asked for it to be deferred. I know that a shadowing study was provided and a little bit of other pieces of information, but from the renderings, as well as the previous discussions here now, it doesn't really sound like we were provided with any additional information that was sufficient for our concerns, even this evening's. Like, I understand that at construction stage, you'll work on that detail of the transition between the two different cladding types. But I mean, it, it is a valid point right now that it does look like an unna unnatural transition and therefore not really good quality. And I think that that was one of the comments last week was that this is obviously near one of the gateways to uh, both Halifax and Dartmouth, high traffic area, huge opportunity for you guys to come in with something that <laughs> isn't quite as unclear, I guess. So I'm just wondering if at this stage, like obviously they're meeting the requirements of the bylaw, but for our purposes from a design perspective, it just seems like our comments to date haven't been absorbed and, and how do we kind of deal with that? Cause like, quite frankly, I don't like the look of this building at all. I think that like from a height perspective and a contextual perspective, it's fine. But from an architectural perspective, no offense, cause I, I'm not an architect and I'm, this is not a personal thing in any way. Um, but I just think that it's a little bit underwhelming for this application. So that's just my commentary. And I'm just wondering if that's something that we can address in some way in, in this meeting, or if that's outside of our scope, because that seems to be the case. I'll say before I go to Aaron on that one, Elizabeth, thank you very much for the comments. And I, I think the, what they're gonna say is that our scope is to stick with chapter seven and like the 50 or so design criteria and whether it meets, and that's what we're supposed to create a motion on. And of course that doesn't stop us from having other commentary and other things. And so when we get to the discussion stage, if there's something that you would like to do uh, that for our committee to do to, I don't know exactly what you want, we can discuss that at that point. Now I'll go to Aaron now. Hi, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, Mr. Chair, you've, you've got it exactly. We've got a set of plans that we can determine meet the bylaws requirements and, you know, our responsibility from that point forward is to facilitate the application's appearance at, at uh, in front of the committee and receive the recommendation. I appreciate that 
um, it may be difficult to determine what it is you want to inform within that recommendation based on the drawing package that you have. But uh, the best that we can do is, is what we've done is provide the feedback from the June meeting to our applicant and, uh, you know, again, facilitate the thing forward. So, so um, you know, I, I, th I think we're with you that I, at this point, uh, the best we can do is um, try and and have the committees have the committee make whatever meaningful recommendations they can uh, based on what it is they have in front of them. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Yeah, we heard you fine. I just can't see you very well. I'm only about half of your screen. There. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's okay. helpful. Thank you. I'm I'm not trying to be painful. I know um, I know that lots of work has gone into this, and it is an iterative process that I can appreciate. So, thank you. I will just maybe wordsmith something for later. Thank you. Okay, that brings it to me. I've got a couple of questions. Uh, the first thing is about visual termini. Um, so this is section one fifty five design requirement. In the city's memo, it says that it's not a visual termini location. And then the applicant suggested that it was, and that's why they had this cultural artifact item. And then I went and I looked at schedule 25, and I, I think this is a visual termini based on my reading of the map. And so let, let's just clarify here. Is it, does it meet the requirements for section 155 and for visual termini or not? I'll go to the city first. Uh, if it if it is, I must have just missed it. Um, but I'll just look quickly right now. Um, if you have another question, I'll just look that up. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to pull that snap up. There's a lot of stuff yeah. in the drawing. Bear with me for a few minutes. Um, okay. My next question was is for the develop for the developer. Okay. It's a compliment. What I noticed in most of your renderings and on the on the drawings was that you have this. Um, you call it a distinction steel siding and it covers the entire top floor and it looks like cedar wood, right? Yeah, this, the color is cedar color, yeah. yeah. I really like that. So I'll say thank you for that. And I'd say almost every single building that we've looked at since the beginning of this committee have looked the exact same. Um, and they usually just have a very narrow band about 12 inches wide at the top. And uh, I never thought it was much of a cap, a cap for these buildings. Uh, if you're going to do something that's the whole top floor, that gets um, a compliment from me. And I'd just like to clarify because some of the renderings show that it's only a band, but most of the renderings show it's the entire top floor. And I was just wondering if you could clarify and like to capture that in the minutes if that, was, if that is your intent, the entire top floor. Uh, so can you reference, uh, can you share your screen or uh, share the rendering? Uh, there's one rendering. Yeah. And. Um, so here's the other one. So this is where you put the building uh, superimposed over, I guess, the city street. And you yeah. see that band's only the top, you know, foot or two. Uh, yeah, you know, this one was uh, based on the other, uh, you know, the previous design, which we have provided. And uh, based on the uh, requirements, we have to uh, show the uh, different color for the top third distinction. So yeah. in the latest, uh, you know, uh, in the latest renderings, uh, you will see the, the, the top floor all around the it's gonna be cedar color. The whole floor is going to be cedar, right? Yeah, all the, yeah. Yeah, all the, uh, the top, floor. top floor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I, and I'd ask Alicia if you can just capture that in the minutes. That's something that was really particular interest to me. Um, the other thing was in our last meeting, we said that if there is any public consultation that occurred between last meeting and this one, if you could come back with an overview of what feedback, or what, what you've done and what feedback you've received. So basically we, uh, yes, we held that uh, meeting last, just uh, Monday, it was Monday? Two days ago, it was two days ago, yeah. And then uh, there was a couple of concerns the neighbors had. Uh, one of them was about the blasting. So they wanted to know what kind of process is gonna go like they wanted to have better understanding if there would be any blasting or no. And then we said basically in this stage without having the geotechnical investigation, it's pretty hard to say that. But if it's required, uh, just try to explain to them that uh, 
the contractor, the excavation contractor, they have to hire a third party to go around and then take a picture of all the houses around. And also they will monitor their, uh, their uh, uh, explosion, passing, and uh, also the, uh, the ground vibration, everything. And we try to kind of uh, explain the process, how it goes. Uh, but honestly, I don't really know what's there. So it might be required some blasting or no. I, 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 don't, I do have no idea. Okay. What kind of public consultation did you do? Did you have a meeting or is it online? Uh, no, it was, a, it was a Zoom meeting or yeah, online meeting. How many people attended? Uh, three people. Three neighbors. Three yeah. neighbors uh, were attending. Sam, Marge, uh, Laura. Marilyn. Um, you don't have to give me their names, actually. That's, that's okay. I might, be, I might be private, actually. Uh, um, we'll send you along the minute of the of the uh, of the, uh, of, the uh, of the our meeting. I don't even know if you're allowed to do that to send it to to the committee. You oh, certainly send to the city, but I don't the think city, I don't think the committee is supposed to be privy to it, yeah. except for verbal discussions. Yeah. Was there anything else besides the blast? Um, you were concerned it was, about? Yeah, the, the, it, there was. Uh, there is a couple of the trees between uh, between the prop uh, between this uh, project and the uh, and the neighboring property, and they were uh, pretty anxious about them. So and then so basically, uh, developer promised them to keep them, uh, you know, to try to keep them as possible, like as much as possible. So basically, and of course, they will uh, plant more trees after the construction is over. Okay, anything else? And number of parkings was one of the concerns they had. And, and, and yeah, so we told them that we provided like 44 spots and lots of, um, uh, bike parkings or bike racks and basically uh, yeah so the other thing they were really concerned about it was uh, oh the mechanical uh, mechanical um, the rooftop units and generator where it's sitting and those kind of stuff like they were concerned about like in the noise of those units and then uh, we try to explain that most likely the generators are going to go on the vault underground parking somewhere and it's going to be uh, most likely it's going to be like a natural gas generator and they will know yeah yeah and then rooftop units usually they are far away from everybody and they are not that much noisy to make uh, like things yeah, that was a couple of uh, these uh, the concerns the neighbors had, and then we tried to uh, answer the questions. Anything about size or traffic, shadows, the general design, if they liked uh, it or not? No, no. Um, they, they, they liked the design, actually. The neighbors, they really mm -hmm. liked the design, and, but they, were, they had some concerns, of course, right? And we tried to answer them. Um, okay. You know uh, that uh, we have just ex tried to explain to them what we have designed so far for that uh, location is exactly depends on um, how busy right now they, there is that community. For example, I can explain to the community as well. For example, uh, we choose the Georgia Street to put some, uh, you know, a quiet uh, side of the building and we just put four doors. Uh, to keep the uh, the street calm as we can, you know, and uh, we put the two separate uh, parking uh, um, entrance, uh, one from Wise uh, sorry, one from Pleasant Street, and the other one from George, um, to have a you know uh, fair noise for the uh, neighbors at this uh, at that location at that uh, street. Um, we just explained to them about the uh, building features and uh, whatever was related to this design. And we just came up with this kind of concerns, which uh, Mohammed just explained them to you guys. Um, and that's it. They never ask about the traffic really and, and, and shadow. Yeah. They didn't ask about that? No, they didn't. No, ask. No. Okay, that's fine. Guys, thank you very much for actually having an answer prepared. On that because usually in these meetings we don't have any kind of information on how the public consultation went. Claire, over to you. Thanks Mr. Chair. Uh, Aaron, Sean and I reviewed the Schedule 5 uh, and this property is not within 
of U terminus. So <laughs> I can. What if I, I, I'm in disagreement, honestly. I, I looked at schedule 25 and it showed a dot. 25. Pardon me. Yeah. I was looking at schedule 5 as per section 155. Um, bear with me for a sec. I can check what 25 is. What's schedule five? Uh, schedule 25 is for the wind energy overlay zone boundaries. And I read that wrong. I was looking at the U term and I. There are a few sites on either side of uh, Pelzant Street, but not where this property is located. Mr. Chair, Claire can share her screen if that's helpful. Yes, please. Good luck, Claire. I don't know Zoom very well. So. It doesn't look like I have permission at the moment. Okay, so. There we go. So this is the site here uh, on the corner of Wise Road and Pelzant Street. So there's um, a view terminus on Brookside Ave and down on Faulkner Street, but not on Pelzant Street. Yeah, okay. The map I was looking at doesn't zoom in that much. <laughs> so maybe that's it. Can I just show you? I'm sorry, I'm gonna pause this meeting for a minute because I wanna make sure that we got this right. Yeah, I'll say it's because I couldn't zoom in that much. I'll stand corrected. That's not a view termini. Just too bad because I actually think it is a very highly visible location. It should be treated as a view termini. Um, so in that case, section 155 does not apply. I'm going to go back to these uh, to this cultural artifact one more time. Can you tell us? Is that just a sign that says cultural artifact? Not necessarily, um, it could be uh, the building name or uh, or any any sign, like not necessarily like uh, that wording there. Okay, I have no further questions. I think we're done the questions. So I'm gonna ask somebody from the committee to put forward a motion as as per what's on the agenda, and then we can go into the discussion. So I need Jonathan or Christina or Elizabeth or Alex. You're muted, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, that the design review or design advisory committee recommend approval of the level three site plan approval application for 169 Wise Road, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Seconder.
if I need Alex or Christina or Elizabeth to second the motion, then we can go into the discussion. Seconded. Seconded by Alex, thank you very much. So we'll go into the discussion. Usually how these things go is uh, I'd say, does anybody, is anybody not in agreement that all the design criteria are met? I have to any... say that at this point, I don't feel comfortable to approve this with, with the information we have. That's my feeling. Okay. Um, is it because you don't have enough information or is it because uh, there's specific design criteria that you don't think have been met? No, I believe there is not enough design definition. I cannot approve a facade do not knowing what is going to be the interior and do not understanding the possible understanding of the building, the future. I have a few questions on that. Okay. Um, anyone else? I'll let you ask your questions in a minute. I'll just remind you, like the first thing we're supposed to do is recommend whether or not it, it, it meets the criteria. That's the main scope. And then we'd go outside of the scope to add recommendations if necessary to the motion that these are things that the developer may or may not take into consideration. But that's all, all the only power that we have is we recommend whether it meets the criteria or not. And if, if you don't think there's enough drawings to make a decision, and we, then you'd abstain from the vote, which I think is what you're going to do, Christina. Yes, that's what I'm going to do then. Okay. How about anybody else? If we said, this, this starting off at first basics, uh, do you feel the design criteria have been met? The ones in chapter seven, chapter six. Yeah, Sorry. I feel I feel they've met the uh, requirements of this meeting. I just have. Uh, maybe one recommendation. Okay, and I'll be clear, it's chapter two, part six. I always get that confused. So there's about a hundred and you know, it's about 50 different design criteria. How about you, Jonathan, Alex? Are you, are you guys satisfied that the criteria have been met? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, definitely some changes can be made. Um, and in future applications, I'd, I'd like there to be more detail provided, but I think on the basic level, it's, it's there. Okay, Alex? I, I would agree with that. I would say it seems to meet the requirements. Uh, I would also say though that there's some inconsistencies in the renderings and the general lack of detail. And in the future, I'd want a bit more certainty before recommending something. Okay. We'll have that noted in the minutes that Alicia is preparing. Um, so now I just I'll go around and let everybody uh, take their turns adding to the motion any kind of recommendations that you'd like to have. Would you like to start, Jonathan? And I say, Alicia, usually when Liam was doing the minutes, he'd put he'd share his desktop and he put the motion on there that we could watch as he typed modifications to the motion. Are you able to do that? Hi, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, if you want to just bear with me for a second, I can give it a try. Oh, I think Jill is. Um, I have been listening to some of the comments and I do have something drafted so I can give it a try. Thank you. Just give me one second. Are you able to see my at the word document with the motion? You certainly can. Thank you. Okay. Um, wasn't exactly. I I missed the comments a little bit about the green space. I thought it was to change the location, but um, if you yeah, just want to have a look at that and then whatever comments you guys have. So go to Jonathan first. I think uh, the first item was his. 
yeah you adjust the wording as you see fit um so it's more so a boat they said they were going to have an accessible rooftop um so any area that is not accessible uh should have uh should be a green roof should be a planted green roof Great. Um, and the thing about the green space, um, just let you finish there. Um, yeah, anything about the green about, about the green space was um, right now they have sod uh, located between the building and the sidewalk, uh, and I thought that should be replaced with a fully landscaped area. Sorry, did you say the building and the sidewalk? Right. Okay. Just give me one sec. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing was about the material on the facade. Um, I tried to, to word this a little bit. So um, redesign the main facades to clean up the difference. Uh, between the white and gray materials. Uh, in order to give the building a more cohesive design. Uh, and to make that design uh, consistent along all four facades. And anyone can can play with that if they want. I don't know if that's the most clear it could possibly be. That's good to me. That was everything from me. Alex, did you have anything? You talked about the uh, the materials on the ninety degree walls. Yeah, I I would say more generally, I guess, just in uh, sort of the podium section, maybe um, streamlining the materials a bit. It seems like there's just a lot going on there. There's sort of gray bricks and white bricks and stone, and then aluminum cladding as well. So maybe simplifying it a bit might make the building look a bit cleaner. Um, I, I would say just addressing, I guess, the material combinations of the lower floors, if that makes sense. Is my mic muted? Nope. Uh, no. Okay. Not. okay. What if we say like uh, consistent materials? Is there? Did you want to say it? Sorry, I missed the what you said. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, consistency in materials. Consistency with the materials in the podium section. Yeah.
<clears throat> Mr. Chair, may I just interject for one moment? Yes. Proceed. Um, I just, we need to do a quick check on quorum. If, if uh, Christine is going to abstain from voting, we just have to make sure that we're going to have quorum. And by my count, if she does not vote, we do not have quorum. If she votes no, does, is there quorum? There would be quorum if she votes, but uh, if she abstains, then we would not have quorum for voting purposes. So I, I vote for no. That clears it up. We have quorum by the slimmest of margins. As it stands, if it goes the way we expect, we'll have four votes in favor, one vote against, with five people voting in total, and quorum is five. That's correct. So uh, my apologies proceed. I just wanted to have that procedural point out there. And I'm very glad that you did. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And I, I think this might help if I have not abstained. And if anybody loses their internet connectivity, then we will not have quorum. So I'll do a check of that before we actually vote. Because I've already lost connection once for a minute. Yeah, I lost connection too. Okay, I'll probably do a roll call. Okay, so we got Alex taken care of. Elizabeth, did you have, um, I think you did have a few things. Yeah, no, I think that my recommendations have been captured in these here. So I'm okay to move forward without anything additional. Okay. Um, and what I would say that I think Alicia would have captured uh, some dissatisfaction with the level of information that was provided for us. That does not need to go into the motion. Uh, and also um, that there was some discussion about whether or not this is a view termini and that it, it still is a highly visible location. And so it does deserve to have some high quality uh, design associated with it, which, um, which I mentioned specifically was the top, the entire top floor being that uh, specialized steel siding. Um, I don't think we have anything else to add to this. So with that, I would like to have somebody make a motion to adjust the motion that's on the floor by reading the entire amendment. We still need to, to see your screen. Thank you. Between Alex and Elizabeth and Jonathan, can one of you read that? I can, yeah. Uh, just start at the that. Start at the second paragraph. Yeah. Okay. So I move that the design advisory committee has reviewed the application for case two three zero five six. I'm sorry, sorry, Elizabeth. I got that wrong. Say so, that's going to be the final motion. We should say I move to amend the motion on the floor as follows, and then add in um, the rest of that. Yeah. Okay. I move to amend the rec recommendation on the floor uh, to that the de design advisory committee has reviewed the application for case 23056 and recommends approval of the application with consideration given to the following. Any area of the roof that is not accessible should be a green roof, adding the location of the rooftop staircase to the proposal, adding visual enhancements to the building design, replace sod with full a fully landscaped area between the building and the sidewalk, redesign main facades to clean up the difference between the white and gray materials in order to give the building a more cohesive design and to make that design consistent along all four facades and consistency with the materials in the podium section. Thank you, we have a seconder. Seconded. Thank you. I'll go to the question and I'll just have, ask everybody to take their, uh, their microphones off mute um, and let me know how you're voting. Jonathan, are you in favor? I am, yeah. Alex? Uh, yes, in favor. Elizabeth? Yes. Christina? No. 
and myself, I'm in favor. So the motion passes. Four eyes, one nay. Um, so now we can close this out. What I need is one final motion here to say uh, to uh, uh, to move to approve. Jeez, oh, what is it? <laughs> approve the amended motion as discussed. Do I have a, a move, Jonathan? Yeah, I'll, I'll move to approve the amended motion as discussed. Okay. Seconder. I'll second that. Okay. And I'll go through again. Jonathan, are you in favor? In favor. Elizabeth? Yes. Alex? Yes. Christina? No. And myself, yes. Four eyes, one nay. The motion passes. Thank you. We'll be moving on. Uh, Jill, do we have any correspondence, petitions, or delegations? We do not. Good. Item eight, nothing to be brought forward. So item nine, we're going on to a brand new application. Uh, this is case 23515, a level two site plan approval for 1134 Tower Road in Halifax. We're gonna welcome for the first time, I believe, Karen Godwin on yes, behalf of the city to, to present. The floor is yours. Yeah. Good yeah, good evening, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, if I could ask the clerk's office to put up the presentation. And I'll, uh, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, yes, as I said, good evening, everyone. And my name is Karen Godwin, and I'm a planner as well with the uh, land development subdivision division. And today or tonight now, I guess we're getting into the evening, I'll be present an application. This is a level two site plan approval for the committee's recommendation. The property is located at 1134 Tower Road in Halifax. And it consists of a four story addition containing oh, approximately, I think it's 16 units to the rear of an existing multiple unit dwelling uh, for there. So it's an addition in the rear. Just so that you're aware, this property does have an existing multiple on it that does contain 12 units, but the application that is in front of you tonight is just for the rear addition. So the next slide that we have, I thought just to be helpful for you, if you wouldn't mind bringing it up, it just gives you an idea of where this property is in location um, to Victoria Road and Tower Terrace gives you a block and it it should help you in knowing the footprint um, of the property itself. And as you can see in the rear of that shaded area, there's a large area there that is presently being used, I think as a, as a parking lot or a gravel parking lot. So I thought that just might help you there to know the block. Um, moving on to what I have also put together for you is in uh, for the next slide is an aerial view that should give you a perspective of maybe the surrounding block and what is there now. And as you can see, it's a mixture of small scale and larger scale uh, high density residential units and off to your right, you'll see the hospital. So I just want to give you an idea of what is around that block there. So moving on to the next one, next slide please. Um, uh, this here reflects where the actual addition is going in proximity to the existing building. Um, the front part of the existing building is an older uh, two unit dwelling, I believe it is, yes, two units that was there, oh, probably early 1900s. And then an addition of about 10 units was put on, oh, about six years ago. And now this is the final and third, I, I guess, addition to this, to this building. But it just gives you, shows what's in the rear and what's on the two sides. And the retaining wall that's along there. I believe when we go to the site plan, you'll probably see that it will remain in place. Um, next slide, please. 
So this is just a, um, uh, a snippet of our zoning. So under the center plan, this property is zoned uh, HR1, which is a, uh, a, a high density area. It's, um, it also is um, similar in zoning for the adjacent, all the properties within the couple blocks. They're all the same under the uh, regional center plan. So it, it just gave you an idea so you can see they're all very similar zones within that area. Um, next slide, please. Now this here is a um, just a street view of maybe the adjacent property so you can get an idea from, from the street. Now we do not have a street wall with this addition, so, but it does show the existing driveway that will be used. There's no really effect to any driveway off the street itself. And it's uh, going uh, east there towards the uh, the hospitals. And the next slide uh, would just show the the other side, the west side towards there, on Tower Road itself. Um, now, getting into just a little bit of a background on our next slide is just I just want to give you the the zoning, it's the HR1, which you saw earlier there on a map, higher order residential. It's under the regional center bylaw. And the existing use, as you saw in those earlier slides, is a multiple unit residential building that contains 12 units. So the next, we wanna to go to maybe the next slide, which should show you some renderings of what this building looks like if you were standing on the street. You can see the older, portion of the uh, of the building in front that's in green. The addition that was done, I believe about six years ago, containing the 10 units, and then a perspective of what this four story addition is, uh, is gonna look at like. Um, now the applicants has also given us a nighttime uh, sort of rendering. If you wanna go to the next slide, please. That will show it from a street perspective as well. Thank you. Next slide, please. Is um, this is the actual uh, site plan itself, and it will just give you an idea in the shaded area, the size of the proposed addition in the rear, the setbacks, and we'll get later to the landscaping plan that you you would have seen, but um, in your package. But in relation, it also gives you a little bit of an idea of the relation of the buildings locations next door along with the existing building and how that setup is done. Next slide, please. Now going through our approval process, um, the proposed addition is uh, about 1378 uh, square meters. And because of that, it falls into uh, between the thousand and 3000 square meters, which designates it as a level two site plan approval. And the applicant has completed their pre-application stage here to ensure all our land use bylaw requirements have been met and that the site plan approval criteria of part six are addressed. And just to show where it stands with our process as well in the next slide is the, the pre-application has been made and the applicant is uh, obligated to do the public information session, which is now operational. The website is up and there is the appropriate signage on the, uh, on the site itself. So now we're here tonight for the design advisory committee recommendation. And next slide was where we're going to start to get into our criteria, our site plan criteria. Now, um, we'll start with chapter two. And after each of these slides, um, there is um, a plan of it I've also put with the criteria. Um, chapter two, there is no at grade private and open space design with this because it's a rear addition in the property, uh, on the property. But the developer has... Um, submitted drawing showing that all the walkways are going to be cast in place concrete under section 120 of the bylaw and they will be um, going from certainly from the 
access entrances of the addition down towards the sidewalk along Tower Road. And you will see that on the next slide. As you can see here, this is uh, the landscape plan that will reflect the walkways coming out of the access entries running along the right hand or the left hand side of the property along the front of the existing building down the stairwell there are a few stairs onto uh, uh, the sidewalk. The next slide please. Now getting into chapter three, there is approximately four criteria here that we looked at. Um, the first one being under section 131, any of the area that had exposed foundation, it is clad with materials that's consistent with the overall building design. And 132, you will see the building top distinction it was accomplished with a penthouse being differentiated from the lower two thirds of the building by color and a recess for the penthouse, which is virtually integrated into the overall design of the building. And they use similar materials as the base building, which you will see. And um, the rooftop mechanical features are integrated in with the design of the building and they're concealed from public view at the street line. These and the next plans you will see going to the elevation drawings on the next slide, the different materials and how any of the anything that would be above grade, the material is consistent and along with the pantos. So here you will see the elevation and it's shown on your drawings on sheet A201. And we'll go to the next slide for A, uh, A202. And the last elevation where it's a rear addition, we'll only have the three elevations. Uh, the next slide, please. And the next slide, yeah, that is the last one. So getting into, yeah, that would be the last elevation there. That's uh, the west elevation that's also shown on A202. Um, next slide, please. Now, getting into chapter four, there's no, under section 135 of our bylaw, there's no pedestrian connections on the site, or there's none proposed. And any motor vehicle parking it is internal to the building underground and its access is not proposed, proposed in the street well because it's within the rear addition and there are no proposed mechanical features at all visible from the street line. Next slide, please. Uh, chapter five, it is not a heritage building, nor is it designated in a heritage conservation area. So we didn't look at any of the criteria under chapter five. Next slide, please. Chapter six. Um, to do mainly with the walkways. They all as shown on some of the elevation drawings that you would have in front of you. Any of the common building entrances and walkways for the addition, they will be illuminated. And the subject site is not a view terminus site under section 155. Next slide, please. And um, they have met all the bylaw requirements under this application, under the land use bylaw, and no variations have been requested for that project. Next slide, please. So to conclude this, um, you know, the design advisory committee, we're just asking to make recommendation pertaining to the site approval design requirements that are under our part six of the uh, regional center land use bylaw as it pertains to the, uh, the building design for the addition only for 1134 Tower Road. Next slide, please. So that concludes my presentation and free, I'll be here to answer any questions and also in attendance tonight uh, are the applicants which are representing the owners Aaron Ashley and Michael Napier, and both of them are from Michael Napier Architects.
Thank you very much, Karen, for the wonderful presentation. I'll open the floor to questions, either for Karen or for the applicant. Would anybody like to go first? Sure, so, uh, oh, go ahead, Alex. Um, I just had uh, one comment I actually had about this application that I really liked is that the drawings and the renderings seem to show the uh, like dryer and HVAC vents, um, which actually can have a big impact. Uh, so I'm, it's nice to see those included. Um, something I was wondering is in the drawings, uh, a lot of the cladding looks like it's some sort of brown, uh, it says composite metal cladding uh, and it's sort of clapboard shaped. Whereas in the renderings, it looks like it's a smooth white material. I was just wondering um, if there's any, if there's been a sort of any decision, I guess, on what the cladding would be. Uh, hi. Um, it would be more like in the elevations, it would be a horizontal siding. Okay. Yeah. And is the yeah. plan for it to be brown, like in the elevations or is there- We haven't, they, they're sort of throwing around a couple, uh, we've been discussing sort of a wood look aluminum siding, but it, we're not that far yet. Oh, thanks. That's all I had. Thanks, Alex. Were you Jonathan or Elizabeth or Christina? Yeah, just more of a question for staff. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but on previous applications, we didn't have um, on the material list um, the, the material or similar. Uh, my understanding under center plane was we were getting away from that because there was a ton of that in old applications and it was very frustrating because um, we never really knew what we were getting. Yeah. So, or getting. Uh, so can staff just clarify that 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 is the case that this is still allowed to happen where we have it could be this or it could be something completely different um i apologize i'm not familiar with maybe a decision that was made previous um we had received a lot of information with this application and just wanted to share it with what we had but uh, uh sean is on as well and maybe he can speak to the question regarding previous applications Sure, we've, we've had this application for a little bit this, before it's come to the committee, so there might have been a little bit of overlap, but certainly, you know, we check it to make sure it meets the, the materials that are permitted under the bylaw, but we would look to the committee to make a recommendation if you want something, I guess, a little bit more specific. Uh, we're all ears and, and ready to listen to a recommendation regarding that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not worried about this application. I think it's a, it's a nice little addition, um, but it just, I always find it difficult to make decisions um, when we're not given the actual materials that are going to be present. Um, I know they can be a bit more vague, might be easier, but um, just having that or similar uh, never feels good to me. And that, again, that's more towards future applications, not this specific one. Certainly, certainly, yes. Thanks, Jonathan. I think uh, for Alicia, I just want to be let it be known Sarah McDonald who joined us during the presentation. So she's here. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Uh, I'll let Christina or Elizabeth or Sarah, do you have any questions for the applicant or for the city? I don't have any questions. Thank you. I don't have any. I do. Um, I'm just wondering if there was any consideration given to having the newest addition on this parcel um, sort of be cohesive with the other two existing buildings. When you look at some of the drawings there that show, um, you know, them side by side, even, you know, matching the style of window or something just to demonstrate that it is, um, you know, I know it's not a street face, but that it is sort of one cohesive multi-res parcel. Um, any discussion over that? Um, we, when we were looking at it, 
I'm always hesitant to go, you know, you, it's, it's clearly an addition. So to try and match it 100%, it's never going to match 100%. So I don't want to sort of fake it out. We did, we're trying to stay consistent with things like the horizontal siding and the, the guardrails would be a similar sort of metal guardrail to tie it in together. Um, the windows on the existing are quite small. So we wanted to go bigger with that and allow a lot more light in. Um, so we sort of, we're trying to do kind of nod to what's there, but not match it because it, it is an addition. Is that... Um, other questions, Elizabeth? Uh, no, no other questions. Um, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. What about you, Christina? I have a few questions. Thank you for the presentation. That was very clear. My first question goes within the windows that you had to close because of the, of the existing building. And in that case, um, how is the windows going to be recovered? Because the amount of light that exists right now at the facade is not sufficient for the depth of the, the room. And my, I have a question because I'm not, I don't know if I totally understand because there is a staircase, but I don't see that um, enclosed staircase. How do I exit to the street? So it's more questions than, is it clear what I'm asking? Uh, yeah, the, there we will be losing one window that's in the yeah. living room area, but there is a second window on the side. Um, and that enclosed staircase exits through the parkade and into, I'm trying to remember what side it is. It goes, just let me pull my plan. It, you can go in two directions. It enters into the parkade and you can either go out the driveway or you can go out the other side to the south elevation to that paved walkway. Okay, so you exit from the parking. Sorry, that's not clear to me. On If, if you have uh, the P1 level, that yeah. okay. closed parking, that's it's, it's essentially the main entrance and exits for that. Okay. Uh, Okay, so I got rated corridor. Right. Okay. So yeah. I mean, as as long as if it uh, perform within the normal exits, because it's an emergency exit, I will yeah. be okay. But it's not clear to me. The second question is: You say yes, we have a second window, but it's over a kitchen counter, and you have a living room that at this point is only living with that small window from the kitchen. So it, it needs a little bit of understanding because the moment you lose that window, what mm -hmm. is to dwell in the space that the only window that he has is above a kitchen counter, right? Mm -hmm. so in the living room. So I think maybe the kitchen could rotate 90 degrees and you will have a window towards the living room. But you see the moment you enclose that window, it's, 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 I don't think it's very pleasant to dwell in a room like that. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the proposal is very clear. Uh, I think the, 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 the units are okay. I, I would have a certain concern about the entry because in between the existing building and the new building is a small of a, a deep entry. So uh, in terms of security, in terms of uh, what is to, to, to enter that space at night, maybe there should be something there, maybe light or something. Would you like to talk about that? Uh, the, the proposed entry, yes. It's only recessed, it's recessed a couple of feet and it's almost six feet wide and it will be illuminated. Okay. Right, because it's the main entry and, mm -hmm. and it's in the, in the recess, so it's not yeah. the best solution. You understand mm -hmm. that, right? It's only, uh, there's maybe a three foot overhang, I think, over the space. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hearing 
No further questions. I think we can move to the discussion portion. So I'll say thank you to Karen and thank you to Ashley for answering our questions. Um, as per usual, we need to start off with somebody making a motion as, uh, as uh, outlined in the agenda and then we can adjust from there. Do I have a volunteer to do that, please? Yeah, I'll put it on that the Design Advisory Committee recommend approval of the Level 2 Site Plan Approval Application for 1134 Tower Road, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Thank you. Seconder? Second. Seconded by Alex. Very good. The motion is on the floor. We are in discussion now, so um, I guess I'll ask Alicia if she could again put up the motion, share her screen. Um, and I'd let everyone, I just open the floor to whoever wishes to go first to make any adjustments. Actually, before we do that, I'll just say, um, it, it appears to me that all the design criteria have been met, which would mean we should be approving this, or recommending approval. Is there anybody who um, has a different opinion on that? Now, hearing none, I think we're all in agreement on that. So then we'll just go to adjusting the motion that's on the floor if, the, if anybody has any recommendations. So I'll, I'll open it up to whoever wishes to go first. Yeah. If anybody wishes to go. I, I can go. My recommendation is about uh, the, the close of those two windows in that living room. So um, I would recommend that the window will be with a, a bigger size and that the kitchen should rotate 90 degrees. I think you have to be really specific. I okay. think, and, and are so you referring to the additional, the addition yes. or the existing? No, the addition. Okay, you should clarify which floor and which unit you're, okay, you're referring I to. Do that. I think it was clear. Let me see if I open my drawings again. Um, I think is the, the corner window. Can somebody help me? What is the name? Because I, I think I closed my drawings. Christina, from what I can see, it looks like you're referring to not this edition, but the edition before. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I don't, do we have purview over? that are we allowed to make recommendations on the rest of the building we sure can okay <laughs> <laughs> we can sure yeah uh, yeah i mean and we're not doing it like just to be mean we're doing it because it's being affected by this building the addition so i mean it's relevant yeah it is relevant okay It's so I think we have to say on the existing building. Yes. We need to know what floor, uh, which which wall. I'm so sorry, I closed my drawings. And... I think we're going to say, uh, is this the west wall? East wall. West, west wall. wall. West wall openings will be closed, so we need to provide better light on the north and south in this case. I got a note here from from the uh, from Aaron Ashley saying that these windows occur on all floors of the existing building. Exactly. So this would be typical for all floors, presumably. Yes. So on the existing wall, West Wall, construct bigger corner windows in the living room and rotate the kitchen 90 degrees so as to achieve, what would you add to that, Christina? Um, so as to achieve um, a better connection between the living room and the window. And to also, is this to, to improve light in the, in the units? Absolutely. And to okay. And so add that in too, please, Alicia.
Okay. Okay, anything else, Christina? No, that's fine, because I was asking about the staircase, but it, it complies with the emergency exit, so I'm fine with that. Thank you. Alex or Jonathan, Elizabeth, Sarah? I don't have anything to add um, to the motion. I would agree with Jonathan that I think more as a general statement, um, uh, like having this material or similar uh, seems too vague to me. I don't know if that's something we can look at in the future, but that, that's the one thing yeah. I out here. Thank you. That won't go in this motion, but we can have make sure it's in the minutes as um, something that we, we think can be used, can be improved in subsequent applications. I do have an additional recommendation. Thank you. Um, so just a recommendation to incorporate the proposed building with the existing two buildings on the site from an architectural design perspective. I know you gave an explanation, but it just doesn't seem to look like they're meant to be adjacent to one another, even from a neighborhood perspective. Sorry, can you repeat that, please? Yes. Yeah, no problem. So uh, incorporate the proposed building with the existing two buildings on the site from an architectural design perspective. Can you add like to improve cohesiveness? Yeah. Because that's, yeah. that's what they'll need. What we're trying to achieve. Yes. Thank you. Okay. We got two. Does anybody else have anything? I'm hearing none. So I think we have um, all the amendments complete here. So I think I'd ask either Christina or Elizabeth to make a motion to amend the motion on the floor as follows, and then read those those two bullet points, please. Okay, sure. I move to make a, what is it? An adjustment, an amendment, an amendment, amendment to the motion on the floor, yeah. motion on the floor uh, that the design advisory committee mm -hmm. has re reviewed the application for case 23515 and recommends approval of the application with consideration given to the following. On the existing belt building west wall, construct bigger corner windows in the living room and rotate the kitchen 90 degrees so as to achieve a better connection between the kitchen and the living and to add, I think, natural light, as well as incorporate the proposed building with the existing two buildings on the site from an architectural design perspective to improve cohesiveness. Seconder. I can be me, but I would put, I would have natural light at yep. the end. And she did say natural light, so that will be added. Natural light, thank you. That's perfect, okay. thank you. Any discussion? If not, I'll just call the question here. Um, all in favor of the amended motion? Aye. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, it's unanimous, the amended, the amendment passes. Um, so now we, uh, any other further discussion or else we can go right to the final question. Hearing none, I guess I would like to have somebody make a motion to approve the motion as amended. Arthur, would you like to do that for me, please? Sure, yeah. I'll put on the floor that we approve the uh, motion on the floor as amended. Seconder? Aye. That's Christina. All in favor, say aye. 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 I heard a lot of ayes. Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? 
It's unanimous motion carries. And the application gets our approval, a recommendation for an approval. Okay, we're done all the difficult stuff for today. It's 6.09, um, that's remarkable. That's, the, that's certainly the fastest application, all right, except for the ones that we deferred, but. <laughs> okay. And uh, Karen, I'll say once again, thank you. That was a really good presentation. We're gonna move on. Uh, you're quite welcome. Okay, well, you guys, I'll, I'll leave you for the evening. How's that to move on? And uh, I'll go have my supper. Enjoy. <laughs> Two more things. Item 9.1.2, site plan approval application tracker. Open the floor to Aaron to give us an update on uh, on the applications. I, ex I was actually expecting a question on this, but Aaron, go ahead. So sorry, it's taking me that long to get my cursor in the right spot to unmute and, uh, and start the video. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, I think, um, the, the, you know, the tracker, I had mentioned this uh, to you, Mr. Chair, earlier. Um, we've been using this a lot for our own internal purposes as we track our applications. So it's actually been a useful tool for both us and I think for the committee as well. So thank you for that. It keep, it's keeping us organized and, um, and, and sort of, gives us a, a, a useful one-stop tool to understand where things are at. So um, I would just say thank you on that point. I don't really have anything further to add unless there's specific questions. Again, like this is just sort of like a, a snapshot in time where we're at uh, so that we can all sort of see. Okay. Yeah, I, I just say, uh, okay, go ahead, Jonathan. Oh, no, I had two questions. One is I think I love that you guys are using it more uh, <laughs> and I like the detail in it. That's super helpful. I'm wondering if eventually this can be uploaded as an interactive something online for everyone to access these in a more cohesive way um, where, you know, you can click and get the package for these developments off of this table as opposed to finding the correct date and then the correct links right. and all that. It would be a lot more consistent and easy to navigate. That might be something that... Um... Jill, you and I could discuss. It's um, maybe something that we need to speak with the clerk's office about in terms of how to arrange that. Right. Um, really, like it would really just be providing a link to uh, the document location within the tracker. Um, that doesn't seem to be a terribly difficult thing to do, but I don't want to tie Jill's hands. If there's a good way to do it, I don't want to get too far down the road. Jill, maybe you and I can speak about that offline another time. Absolutely, we will do that. Great. Great. Uh, the other question I had um, was with regard to us. Do you guys know which one is coming up next month? Uh, shoot, I just told Sean he could go. Um, I don't know if he's around. I know that we have two um, slated for August, but I'm not right off the cuff exactly sure which um, cases they are. We can send something out um, to Jill for uh, her to distribute to the committee here in the next week or so with you know the ones that we think are uh, online for next month. I, I think I can answer oh, at there least you are. two. Sorry, I told you could okay. go. Thanks for not listening. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, where is it here? I'm just looking at the tracker. 20, there's one on Maynard Street that's abutting a heritage property. I can't remember, oh, there it is. 23513. Mm -hmm. And there is possibly the one on the corner of Cogswell and Gottagen, 23305. We've received Revisions on that one, and it's complete. So we're uh, we're very close on that one. And I feel like there's one more. I think we're probably going to have three, to be honest with you, for next uh, next meeting. Okay, just maybe this is out of bounds or not. Um, do we have any ability to control which ones go next? Assuming everything is as a committee, uh, assuming everything is in from you guys. Yeah, we, we would just send it through the clerk's office, then it's up to the committee from, from there. Okay, so like if, if there was 
say three or four that were ready to go, we could sort of pick which ones we'd want to look at. I, I don't know if I can answer that. I think we, we just provide it to the clerk's office. Okay. Yeah. It would be up to the committee to arrange their agenda, right? It would have sure. to be by motion and vote of the committee. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? No, nope, hearing nothing. I'll say thank you very much, Aaron, for the update once again. <clears throat> So this takes us all the way to 9.1.3, review of the center plan, package B. Uh, so right now it's 6.15. I don't even know how long this presentation is gonna be, but uh, I have a feeling this would probably push us over our limit. Um, I think Ben Sivak, can you tell us how long the presentation was be, will be? Hey, good evening, everyone. Hello, Mr. Chair, and uh, good evening, community members. Uh, well, first of all, just Ben Seaback, Community Policy Program Manager, a, a Project Manager, a Center Plan Project. Um, I have a presentation I've been using to go to various other committees and stakeholders. It's probably, I'm guessing, probably 15 minutes or so, um, maybe 20 at most. So it depends on uh, if, if that's if that works for the committee, or I can really. I mean, you tell me how you how long you want me to be, and I I can yeah. condense it further if you like. Now let's go with that. The fifteen minutes to take us right up to our limit. If we have a couple of questions, we'll go over a bit, and everybody can go on. But right now, there's, there's no motions that we have to to put on the floor with regards to this. And uh, by the looks of it, next month's going to be pretty busy. So if we don't do it now, I'm not sure when. So. I'll say thank you very much, first of all, for preparing the presentation for us. We very much appreciate it. We're all really interested in this. And I'm going to open up the floor for your presentation. Thank you. OK. Uh, OK, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And with that, I'm going to share my screen. I'm assuming I'm able to. Oh, um, uh, Jill, if you don't mind uh, enabling me to share my screen, and I'll, I'll um, There it goes. And okay. Oops, I go to the top of it. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, very good. So yeah, you know, thank you for having uh, me this evening to give you an overview of Center of Pack Package B. Um, as I mentioned, we're taking this through the uh, the committee process, and this is kind of basically the, uh, a similar presentation that we've been doing to, to various other review committees, uh, making our way to regional council, but uh, as targeted for next month, actually. So over the next number of slides, I plan to do is give you just a quick overview of the standard plan context and planning process, just the long journey that brings us to, to this point uh, to date. And uh, I imagine this committee might be more familiar with this than most. Um, I'll give you a quick overview of the package A and the key updates. So um, not, not, not too much data there, but really focus on what's proposed to be updated through the package B process. Uh, spend a bit more time on what is in package B and just also just conclude with the, with the, with the committee and uh, council review process that's ongoing now. Uh, so the first bit of context uh, that committee members might be familiar with or, or not so much is that the central plan is part of our larger program called the secondary plan and bottle simplification program. Um, you know, to be, to be frank, HRM has, um, you know, and for a variety of reasons, it has an overly complex and uh, planning framework at, at the kind of zoning or, or detailed community plan level. Um, and, it, you know, this is, this is challenging for a variety of reasons, not, not to say the plans don't have value, but uh, in that kind of fragmented way, it can, it can be quite challenging to administer and, and, and it's hard to maintain that to keep up to date. Um, so there is a program to update all the plans with the center plan being, being the first phase. So more to come on this for suburban and rural areas. The center plan process itself, uh, well, dates back, you know, really probably more than over a decade to the idea of it uh, comes out of the downtown Halifax plan review, the HRM by design. But the center plan process, as we know, as we know it really started in um, around 2015 with a series of background studies and community engagement leading to a guiding direction document known as a purple document, which kind of gave more detail, detailed direction to preparing land use planning documents. And from there, the, the, the project was split into um, the package A, uh, which is focused on high growth areas and was approved by council in 
September 2019. So that's the that's the plan that's in place, and that this committee is currently providing feedback on different applications going through 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 that process, through, going through that plan, and package B, which is covering all remaining areas and resulting in one comprehensive plan. We did uh, quite a bit of engagement for package B, and, and like many other projects, we're very much interrupted by the by the COVID-19 uh, state of emergency. Uh, we were able to complete some um, in-person meetings uh, before the pandemic, but then very much then um, like other projects had to pivot to more of an online setting that's similar to how we're meeting now virtually um, using surveys and, and, other uh, and other tools. And, uh, and for anyone who's interested, um, all the feedback, all the engagement tools used is um, summarized in what we call a what we heard report. Um, there's other reports for that for package A as well. If you want to look back at the specific feedback and key themes, it contains all the detailed survey summaries and also all, all the different uh, correspondence as well. So a resource uh, for, for this group or anybody who wants to look back and follow the thread between the public feedback and how it's resulted in policies and regulations. Okay, that's enough about process. Uh, the package A overview itself. Um, so, you know, I think this group would be familiar with the, um, the package A is uh, was very much in some ways half the plan or, or, or did the heavy lifting for the center plan and setting up a number of core concepts really the guiding principles for the planning framework and these things these include complete communities human scale design uh, pedestrians first and strategic growth and the packet a, a designation is what your i'm sure this this committee is receiving applications are uh, these are all the high growth areas are for downtown dartmouth and the centers which allowed for some of the highest buildings and, and most intense land use. So this is where high rise buildings would, would, could be permitted. Uh, the corridor designation, which is apply along transit, transit routes and generally supports um, mid rise development and also more of a mix, mix of uses. Uh, the higher order residential, which is more of a residential focus, but and also more mid rise focused. And the future growth nodes, which are areas targeted for growth, but also requires some neighborhood scale master planning to, to, to decide things like the road layout and, and park spaces and so on. Package A also set up a number of key policy areas uh, that also continue to guide the package B component, uh, urban design, uh, which is, of course, a focus of this committee. So I think the central plan uh, put a lot of attention on the, the design of buildings from the outside, placing less emphasis on how they're used interior. Um, uh, policies around cultural and heritage, uh, the regional center includes a, a lot of the, uh, the region's um, heritage buildings, uh, a focus on housing, including increasing the housing availability and, and housing options in, in, the, in the regional center, um, economic development, uh, mobility, uh, environment and implementation, so the different tools, tools we use as well. So some of the key package A updates include um, a streamlined use of the site plan approval tool. And I have one more slide on this one next that I'll, I'll go into this one in a bit more detail because it, 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 it impacts the work of this committee. Uh, in a general sense, of this, it, it, the, the intent is to try to use the tool for uh, focus the, the use of the tool on the on the exceptions or the, uh, rather than the rule. And I'll, I'll explain that in more in the next slide. There's also some uh, proposals that for manner changes to the built from one board building design requirements. Uh, this is based on further stakeholder feedback and also just the experience administering the, the, the plan and bylaw over the past year and a half. There are a few additional zone package A lands, so some rounding out of centers and a new future growth node proposed, for example. Um, a proposed Roby Street Transportation Reserve, and that's been intended to protect uh, lands uh, or support the acquisitions of land for the bus rapid transit uh, route along that road. Um, some minor increases are front and flank and setbacks. A uh, site specific policy for a St. Patrick Alexandra site in, in, uh, in Halifax, and that's, that's in response to council direction to take a harder look at the site and, and, and the, uh, the good community feedback received. And also some implementation policy updates, uh, largely about clarifying when rezoning proposals could be considered. So the site plan approval part is something this committee very much uh, works works within and kind of explain what the um, the proposal to, to streamline the use of this tool. So uh, what the proposal is is to is to um, maintain the existing building design requirements, but to incorporate them into standard land use bylaw regulations. Um, I think what we're finding is that uh, as drafted under package A, the the criteria are very prescriptive. Um, it's you know it's a it's a checkbox whether or not they meet the requirement or not. For example, glazing, 
and that going through the site plan approval process with neighbor notification and coming to this committee and potential for appeals didn't have much value. It seemed to be causing some confusion, uh, especially for residents who don't didn't understand why we're consulting on things that appear to appear to be uh, very black and white. Um, so instead, the the site plan approval tool is is kind of best um, uh, proposing to, to focus on the variations because these are the items that require some discretionary decisions. It's not kind of black and white whether or not a proposal would meet, meet the requirement and also benefit from the public and, uh, and committee advice. Um, so we, you know, the package B does include some proposed changes to those variations because some of the variations could be folded into, into land use viable by requirements and others are added to provide more flexibility. So the proposed site plan variations under package B uh, continue to be the roof edge setbacks for high exempted features, which I think is one that's included now. Uh, a new one for street wall articulation to allow for more for different designs to be able to, uh, to animate the, the streetscape. Uh, provisions to allow for larger great orator premises so that uh, for example, a large format grocery store still could locate on some of our streets, but put more attention into how they interact with the street. Um, uh, provisions allow for relaxation of maximum building dimensions, um, um, so, so that larger scale buildings uh, could still be permitted to provide they articulate their, the buildings in a different way. Um, a couple of different variations for the form and design of institutional community facility uses, things like uh, well, libraries and art galleries that may intentionally want to do something a little more out of scale, uh, different than, than the standard kind of the built in design um, regulations. And also uh, 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 variations related to heritage design for abutting properties and also to address any conflicts between the Heritage Property Act and, and our land use bylaw. Okay, uh, that's package, the package A kind of uh, topics. So I'm just going to quickly. Um, summarize what's in, what's the focus of package B. Uh, well, package A talked a lot about, you know, the, the importance of open space and parks. Package B uh, establishes the park and community facility designations and to apply to, to parks and other um, schools and community set, centers located in a public open space network and it can open space setting. Uh, the designation establishes two zone, uh, a regional park zone that's applied to uh, parks identified in the regional plan like Point Peasant Park and the park and community facility zone, which is applied to all of the parks and also those other types of smaller facilities that are in an open, more open space type setting. I will also note that the, that there's this direction to create a regional center open space plan to really link the, the land use planning part with, with the operational and program size in the parks and, and, and longer term investments and in expanding the park network. The downtown designation is, which was uh, applied to downtown Dartmouth in package B, is proposed to be applied to downtown Halifax. That's folding into downtown Halifax plan into the central plan framework. And of course, this designation is intended to support the, the, the development of the core where the largest scale and most intense land uses are encouraged. Uh, the designation establishes the Halifax uh, zone, the downtown Halifax zone, and eight special areas to to fine tune the, uh, the control of uh, the kind of uh, building design to different parts of downtown. Yeah. I will note that the downtown Halifax plan will live on a little bit longer to, uh, to apply to the Barrington Street and Old South Suburb Heritage Conservation Districts. And that's because of the, uh, more, more because of the administrative challenges with, um, with, with, with those documents and the need to, to go through the Heritage, um, the Heritage Property Act, which has a different process. So, uh, what that work is underway and uh, looking at the creating one downtown Halifax Heritage Conservation uh, District plan. So we expect to fold it into the central plan process within the next year or two. Um, and that uh, further work on Cogswell still needed to really provide some more direction for building heights and, and details um, around building design for that area and more consultation again planned for that area. The established residential designation is arguably the biggest part of the package review process. It's it's gathered the most uh, public interest and feedback, and uh, well, and it's also you know ge geography why applies to about a, a third of the regional center. Um, the designation has applied to the, all the predominantly low rise res residential neighborhoods in Halifax and Dartmouth, and it's generally intended to retain the scale of the existing low rise res residential neighborhoods while providing opportunities for more housing options. The designation. Um, permits uh, uh, secondary suites, backyard suites, shared housing, and home occupations and daycares, generally consistent with the regional plan uh, direction to allow these uh, the kind of these types of accessory uses in, in all low density areas. 
There's also a provision to allow for local commercial institu institutional uses to be considered by development agreement. Uh, that tool is selected for that, uh, even though those fairly small scale developments, uh, its development agreement tool is the only one we have to be able to control things like hours of operation, and that which is important in, in the kind of residential context. The, des the designation establishes four zones, the, the ER1 zone, um, which is a one unit zone plus accessory suites, ER2, which is a two unit zone plus accessory units, established residential three zone with a, a, a three unit zone plus accessory suites and also townhouses, and it's the ER3 zone, which generally applied along kind of transit, transit routes, and also a proposed cluster housing zone to allow for uh, kind of uh, a shared, uh, kind of more of a, a campus or a, a shared living arrangement where you have multiple low density dwellings located on the, you know, the same lot access from a shared driveway. And there are five different precincts and 10 special areas to kind of fine tune, control, fine -tune the controls. Uh, given that different neighborhoods and subdivisions were dealt, developed in different ages and, um, and that uh, they, they, they generally control uh, fine-tuned controls related to things like lot coverage or, or frontage and, 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 uh, and, and things like that that might be a bit different between different neighborhoods. The institutional employment designation is also quite important to the regional center. This is where a lot of the major institutions are located. Um, so it's, it's applied to the universities and colleges and, um, and, and major uh, and, uh, hospitals and federal lands as well, and also small scale institutions like places of worship and community centers. Um, and in short, it's intended to support the uh, support these institutions. Um, in general, you know, we're, we're glad to have them here and we want them to stay and expand. The designation establishes five different zones. It's the institutional zone, which is applied to the small scale institutions, two different university and college zones, uh, one for more of an open space type campus and one for more of an urban campus like the Carleton campus, off Spring Garden Road. Uh, uh, the hospital zone and Department of National Event zones are also established for those lands, although we recognize that the province and, and federal go government generally don't come to the municipality for permits, although there are some high level um, guiding uh, framework in place for those lands. And I will also note that uh, there is some flexibility for certain landmark buildings, so generally places of worship, um, to encourage them to, uh, should they not be uh, kind of their, their, their initial use isn't, isn't viable anymore, um, the encourage them to retain the building and, and internally convert rather than, rather than demolish. Um, and that there can be some adjustments to the zoning through the, to, to, through the rezoning process. Industrial employment designation is uh, also important from the free regional center, especially with the, the, the uh, lands along the harbor. Um, it's applied to existing industrial and mixed industrial and commercial areas. The designation of, uh, establishes three different zones, the, the light industrial zone, uh, the harbor related industrial zone, and the commercial light industrial zone. And I'll also note there's a mixed industrial and commercial special area for the seaport and cove areas of uh, seaport in the Halifax side and cove on the Dartmouth side. Um, and some, uh, some de development agreement policies for our lands around the Halifax grain elevator aimed at uh, ensuring that um, potential risks are considered in terms of the proximity uh, to that facility. Um, and that all highlight there's also an increased opportunities for research and development facility uses in our otherwise more commercial zone, the Sun zone and the, the downtown zones, which allow for things like uh, the, the development or prototyping and, um, and a more, more advanced laboratories things that might be considered uh, industrial, but are really on the lighter end of that range that we're seeing and more, more of that uh, mix, mixing of uses. Last designation I'll mention is the water access designation. And it's applied to pre-confederation water lots um, uh, on the Northwest Arm and, and lakes in Dartmouth. And it's intended to protect the unique character and environment of these waterfront areas. So as this committee members might not be familiar with is that these water lots the, that the predate confederation were, were created before Canada was a country. Um, they can be infilled if approval is given by the federal government and Nostos Arm or by the provincial government and the, and the Lake Vinook or Lake Micmac. So municipality can't control if the lands are infilled is out of our jurisdiction. But once the land is infilled, uh, zoning does apply. So we control uh, after land is infilled, we can control what happens on the land afterwards. So given that constraint, what this water access designation and zone does is apply to zone that intentionally uh, kind of prevents the lands from being used for development. So to try to de-incentivize de the infilling of land uh, to, to ensure that if the land is infilled, it can only be used for parks or water access structures or things that are more park or recreational in nature. 
Hold on a second. So you mean if somebody does that with their own private property to do a land infill on Northwest Arm, you would just say, well, now it has to be a public park. That's that's how you uh, stop it. Not a not a public park, but it can be only like a, a like a gazebo or open space type use. So it's like you can't make you can't make land public through zoning, but we yep. we can we can't we can say you can't put a house in it, or you can say you can't count towards your lot coverage requirements. And in fact, along the Northwest Arm, that's that those rules are already in place. So it's carrying forward that that approach to the Northwest Arm and applying it to Lake Bunook and Lake Micmac as well. Okay, but they could just make a really big front lawn and then a dock or something. Yes, that's yeah, right. Okay, thanks. Uh, so we can't prevent that from happening, but yeah, you know, we can't, you can't, uh, yeah, we can't put a, uh, you can't put a house on that really. Or, um, coming to the end here, I'll just, uh, I'll. Um, this and another couple of things about the COVID-19 considerations. We can often ask uh, because uh, about this because you know package A was approved uh, and put in place before before we're even talking about social distancing or lockdowns. Um, and package B is being developed right in the middle of the pandemic. And um, uh, so it is something we have put quite a bit of thought on, thought thought into. Um, and a few things I'll note, note for the for for this committee um, is that uh, what the, I think what the COVID-19 um, um, uh, pandemic is revealing is uh, on one hand the importance of complete communities and this is one of the core concepts of the center plan um, it's really kind of highlighting how important that, that access to shops and services open spaces close to where, where you live is is in, important from a resiliency perspective and so i think it's it's, uh, it's glad to see that that was already included in, into the center plan framework um, also note the importance of flexible land use controls um, so, you know, we are, you know, uh, kind of mentioned earlier, the central plan generally provide, um, has detailed controls around the, how a building looks like from the outside and it's very flexible how it's used inside. So this is helpful for areas like mixed use areas, which will allow kind of office uses to convert to residential uses without much planning process. Uh, I know there's building, building and construction costs and building code requirements, but, but uh, from a land use planning perspective, it's already enabled um, in, in many different uh, zones in the center plan. We also took a hard look at pedestrian oriented commercial streets um, and they were adjusted to allow office uses outside of downtown designations, recognizing that they also can animate, help animate a street and, uh, and there might be a need to be more flexible on some of our, our more main type streets, given that the, uh, in the short term, they might have difficulty filling some of those commercial spaces. Um, also note the streamlined development review process. So I mentioned about uh, being more selective about how we use the site plan approval tool and this could help some construction projects come, um, uh, some sort of proposals come to the, uh, get to the construction phase a little bit sooner. And we also are increasing the development agreement transition time frames for development agreements that were, that were, uh, in pro, that were um, entered into um, under previous policy or being developed under previous policies, uh, given that the private, private developers are also facing some of the challenges we're, we're facing as a municipality. So this uh, diagram on the screen is, uh, it shows what the what the review process is for the package B uh, review and adoption process. Actually, just earlier this morning, we completed the the kind of first two parts of the review process. We went to all the different advisory committees and community councils and received our last recommendation of community planning economic development standing committee this morning. From here, all these recommendations are going to come together for discussion at regional council and community as a whole. Well, they'll be the, considering these plus other staff recommendations and um, uh, and giving direction to staff about if and how to amend the draft planning documents that, that we're reviewing right now. And at this point, we're targeting a public hearing uh, for late December, late September, and actually because of shifting council, council meeting dates, um, early October might be more likely. And uh, with that, that's, I think, uh, hopefully, a a uh, detailed enough overview that you, you have a sense of what package B is, is all about and, um, and you know where to go find more, more information, but hopefully not long enough to keep you from your, from your moving on with your evening. And, and with that, I'll stop sharing and pass it back to the chair and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you thank very you. much for the presentation. Open the floor mm -hmm. if anybody have any questions. I, I might have a question. It's, I, I, I really want to thank you for the presentation. I, I see a lot of positive points in this. I just have some questions about 
the house will this be implemented so um right now is very good intentions but then there are things that he needs more devotion, such as uh, what heritage are we preserving? Uh, when we have more density areas, what are we talking about? Uh, what will that density be? Or that high rise areas will be? The relation with the water. Are we concerned about the water rising in the waterfront? Um, cult such as Mi'kmaq land, uh, how are we going to preserve and we listen to them as a cultural group? So these are the questions that I have, but I think they are very generic. But overall, I think it's very interesting, this package, in my opinion. Thank you, Christina. Okay. Uh Thank you for sharing. I know there's a lot of questions in there. Would like me to try to respond, or are they more, um, or are we kind of more ra raising raising points? It's more raising points because yeah. uh, when you say uh, we're going to be more attentive to heritage, which I'm very concerned in Halifax, you never say how you're going to do it. So uh -huh. my concern is more about the house. How are you going to implement this? How are you going to define strategies? Uh, than just the points, because the points are wonderful, but the house is what I'm interested. But I think maybe in the future will be more detailed, right? Uh, yes, thank you for yes, hopping on through, through, through Mr. Chair of the committee. Um, the, the how, I guess, I guess in a short presentation, and, and, and um, I didn't want it. I could spend, I could spend two hours going over things, but there, there, is, there is hows in there. Um, in, yes. in the plan. So for heritage, for example, we have heritage conservation districts and we have, I think, 13 different proposed heritage conservation districts. So our heritage team has our work cut out to them to really um, look at places like the Hydrostone and other areas to develop more detailed guidelines uh, for those. So there's there's quite a lot of actionable things in, in the plan around heritage, uh, just, 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 to, just to name one. And, and similarly for, um, for uh, storm surge or sea level rise is also some um, enhanced controls for those two, although I think, uh, and from your comments, I think, you know, point out that uh, a land use planning policies are one thing that, uh, that needs to be coordinated also with municipal operations and council decisions around budgets in terms of how they, where, where and how they invest. So um, you're, you're right, there's the, the uh, planning framework can only go so far where there's other things that um, the municipality needs often, often, often needs to do on these topics. Yeah, thank you, but it looks great, thank you. Anyone else? I've got two questions, but I'll let everybody uh, have their turn first. I guess I just have a quick one, uh, and you may have addressed this, so I'm sorry if I missed it, but you mentioned that the existing downtown um, plan was going to be integrated into the region, into this plan, uh, the center plan, sorry. Uh, so are there any substantive changes to the downtown plan, or is it just a matter of writing it into this one so it's one document? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question and through Mr. Chair, back to, back to you in the committee. Um, I think the answer to that one is both a bit of a yes and no. Um, no, I guess I'll start with a no because we're, you know, the downtown plan has been in place not that long, since 2009 and generally has been, has been working. Um, you know, people seem to be happy with the built form. So we're carrying forward the heights framework and the detailed design controls uh, because it really it's more limited from the Citadel, the, the view planes from the Citadel Hill than, than anywhere else. Um, so that seems to be working, um, but there are some changes because of the the the, um, the approval process is different. It doesn't involve design review committee, um, and so we're street proposing to further streamline the pro the process and kind of align it with central plan controls around around some of the general items. Um, so um, so to kind of align it with the site plan variations for for the other central plan areas, and the kind of one of the bigger changes is also pulling it into the bonus bonus zoning framework. So. The downtown plan led the way, but but that framework is is fairly light. It doesn't it, it doesn't provide that much benefits, and so a big change for for downtown project is is being pulled into the central plan framework in terms of bonus zoning as well. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, it wasn't quite clear to me what what will be the change in the DAC's scope of work. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sure, Thanks for the opportunity to clarify that. Um, so the, 
overall there are kind of, kind of two key changes would be one is geography that instead of just this package a areas the geography of the AC is essentially all the regional center except for that small part of downtown Halifax that will be brought in a little bit later uh, uh, so it's a bigger geography but at the same time um, the use of the site plan approval tool proposing proposing to use the tool tool less to focus on the variations a kind of revised set of variations instead of just um, instead of just design controls that are a little bit more that are more prescriptive in nature um, so it would be it would be focusing on um, proposals that are, that are looking for an exception instead of proposals that are, that, that are that are working towards meeting standard requirements so on one hand the geography area would cover more areas so there might be more um, um, that, that, yeah, so that, that might increase the number of projects, but the, again, the focusing of the site plan approval tool will probably overall um, decrease the number of projects co coming to this committee, but time will tell in terms of, terms of seeing how many of those, how many pro developers choose to, to apply for one of those uh, variations to, to, provide, to get more, a little bit more flexibility for, for the build and design. Okay, so if I get this right, we had two projects today, neither of them were asking for any variations, right? So would these, the way I read it is that these projects won't come to the DAC anymore because they are in the eyes of the development officer, they meet all the criteria. Uh, that that would be correct. And I'm not sure if, if uh, any of the things that they would be looking for might, might trigger a variation, but if they weren't, uh, then, then that would be correct. It would be a little bit more of a streamlined process, yeah. And how soon could this happen? You say that it might get approved in October. Does that mean the DAC scope would change at that time? Yeah, it would be a little bit of a, a yeah, yes, if you share the committee, um, it'll be a little bit of a de delayed process. So if um, if we get to a public hearing, say early October, as, as we're predicting at, at this point, um, then uh, we would be seeking council direction to term, revise the terms of reference to change the geography and scope of work. Mm -hmm. The plans need to go to province. So by the end of the fall, uh, it could be it could all be in, in place in terms of the change of scope of this committee and, and, and the, having the plans in place. That's a big change, thank you. The other question was, um, you've already gone to a lot of community councils for feedback. And I was wondering what kind of feedback have they given you? So they would have been re required to make a motion that they, they recommend approval or they recommend approval with modifications and that sort of thing. What are you hearing from all those communities? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, it's been interesting going to different committees. Um, uh, yeah, and through you, Mr. Chair of the committee, the I'd say it was uh, there's a lot of what I would call site specific um, requested changes coming from the, especially from the councillors for for the regional centre. It's largely fairly minor minor in nature. Um, uh, you know, concerning like you know certain certain properties should be zoned to ER1 to sort of ER2 or, um, you know, minor changes to, to various things, usually in response to land, landowner requests. Um, I'm trying to think of any, um, a Young Avenue, uh, 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 Young Avenue policy has come up a couple of times that the Heritage Advisory Committee were, were proposing both a kind of a established residential special area and it's a proposed heritage conservation district. And there are some, 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 uh, some vacant lands there that uh, have some special attention that are, are Gathering some interest in neighboring residents um, and also committees. Um, I'm trying to think of other any other kind of major items that have come up at the at the various uh, council co committees. Um, uh, to be honest, it hasn't been hasn't been anything too too major that would, would that would require a major major change to the policies or, or, or regulations at this point. They, the committees seem fairly fairly happy with the with the draft at this point, but it, uh, but you know we're not through the process yet, and, and regional council still needs to weigh in. So. So we'll see. Thank you. One last thing. Uh, we've got a group of really engaged citizens on this committee. So if any of them are interested in, you know, suggesting a change, what's the process that they should go through? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question. At, at this point, we're, we're so we're still going through 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 the process. So um, the different review committees uh, and well, re councils can always be contacted uh, with comments. Uh, you can you know, contact your local councillor if you want, or you know, um, any any residents via the email. All regional council actually at you know at, at any time. So there's always that avenue. Although our our kind of formal engage, engagement play phase has ended some time ago now, um, and then the the the, then the last there's always one last um, chance to provide comments directly to regional council. That'd be at the public hearing. We'll we'll be advertising that far and wide, and 
letting people know that you have one more chance to provide it you know raise any comments or concerns to council or 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 to vote support that's okay too um uh, this is uh, similar to what i would have seen when they when they opened up uh backyard suites and everybody in certain neighborhoods could come and talk yes it would be it would be a similar similar type process for that and uh yeah we'll see what if we'd be able to i think councillor has an interest in the whole being able to hold that in person i don't know if we will uh but then maybe maybe we will or a little of a hybrid between in person and, and virtual Yes, but that would be that would be a good example where we, where the council um, it, under provincial legislations, you have to hold these public hearings and and have one more chance of it, um, have have more, one more chance to provide comments directly to regional council. Thank you. Anything else? I had a couple of quick questions. Maybe not so quick, but um, I guess just a bit disappointed in the in the change with the DAC because um, we've had a number of opportunities where there's been sort of a back and forth between us and staff um, about what it, the checklist means. Um, there's been discretion, uh, discretionary decisions there. So I think lo losing that extra set of eyes um, is, is a lost opportunity, I guess. Um, maybe not on all plans, but I think on some of the bigger ones for sure. Um, and there's been a number of recommend recommendations that we've been told have been uptaken from uh, by the developers as we go. Uh, and again, we're, if we lose that, then those things go by the wayside. Um, you said it's getting rolled in with the downtown. So does the DRC no longer exist? Yeah, thanks for the uh, uh, question. I'll quickly clarify that they, they will still exist for a little while longer because the downtown plan is going to live on for the Heritage Conservation Districts, Barrington Street in the Old South Suburbs. Um, you know, it was uh, it, um, uh, was what they, they uh, presented to that committee a number of weeks ago, and they they seemed to understand the um, the, the rationale for it. Um, yeah, but that they will they they will that that committee will, will need to live on for at least another year year or two, and only when the heritage conservation the districts can be folded into the central plan will that committee be uh, I guess will be repealed. So then after that point, there'll be just the DAC for variations and, and the rest is all just done through staff? Uh, yes, yes. And I, I should note that that's also a point of discussion at council. So their council hasn't totally uh, decided. Right. Uh, and they're mostly uh, one of the um, items that was, there, there was no motions coming from the committee, but was a point of discussion about wondering uh, about the uh, um, consultation part of, part of the, the site plan process, especially for larger projects. Ted, did you have a hey, question? I, I want yeah. to add into that. So when the DRC goes away, right, that, that's the plan. It'll eventually go away. Uh, will there be any committee that has sort of a binding authoritative power to make decisions or that all be in the hand of the development officer? Because that, that's something really good about the DRC. As far as I know, it's the only one in all of Canada that has authority to make binding decisions. Uh, it seems yeah, like thanks. it's going away. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I think it was, you know, uh, uh, for on, on that point, um, um, we might need to just uh, uh, agree to disagree about whether or not that's a good or a bad thing. Uh, I think that the staff point of view from past staff reports has been that it's the only one, it, usually committees are more advisory in nature and that you kind of, it's council that, that makes decisions or, or the council delegates it to staff through their policies and regulations. Uh, so it was unusual to have a uh, kind of a, a, a volunteer committee make, make decisions about projects. Uh, and that's one of the, the reasons for for moving away from that DSC DSC framework. It has it. Uh, I'm sure it has its pros, but it also has its drawbacks as drawbacks as well. Um, and and so that's part of the part of the rationale for that. Interesting. So who, who's um, driving that then to remove the authoritative power? I think I know the answer, but I just want to hear you guys say it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be honest, it's been a, it's been a, in, in progress for for quite some time, and uh, it it is something that council uh, is, is supporting as well. We'll see. They have to vote on it still. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did have one other question. There was was there not a five year review on the downtown plan that never, like, isn't that supposed to all be wrapped into this as well? Yes, good, good memory and good, <laughs> good, good point. Um, the 
I think what uh, what happened with the downtown review is, as, as you know, some of these were, kinds of these reviews can take a long time. That the downtown mm -hmm. review was started, and there was consultation, and there, were, you know, the, the the plan was actually revised, and uh, the timing of it with with the center plan got got to be so close that decision was made that to uh, that it that it made more sense to to fold it into the center plan process, the kind of part of the by plan and bylaw simplification process to kind of. Um, simplify that the framework to have you know less plans with you know you know more um, yeah, the same regulations both plans and have it have it in one plan, and so that five year review of the work that was underway there was wasn't lost it was carried forward and brought into part brought into this package B process. Right, right. Um, so on that, totally opening a can of worms here, um, but I'm I'm curious because I've never gotten a straight answer from staff. Has there ever been a uh, impartial review, I guess, of the Rampart bylaws uh, and everything that emanates from Citadel, because I feel like there's there's a, a not necessarily cost benefit, but there there's benefit and then there's there's loss that we we get from those rules, and I don't think there's ever been it's just always accepted as the gold standard. We're always going to do that, but I think I think there's room in there one way or the other where there it's an enhancing them and and making them public because i feel like a lot of people who go up to the store don't know about all those rules about what they're enjoying um versus the development options no thanks uh, for, for points and questions and i should say you know i'll stay, stay a little bit formal and say go through mr chair and, and back to the committee sure, sure. um the uh um you know, there's a, there's a there's a kind of a high level kind of questioning of, of the vision. Is it is is it is it worth the effort? Is it is it part of the long term vision? Um, for better or worse, through through center plan process and also the downtown review, the importance has been maintained and perhaps probably make perhaps as part of what well, we protected them this long. We should continue um, as part of it. Um, and yeah, at, at through package B, we're not proposing anything significant changes, although. I will note just a couple of minor updates is well, one through package A, where they've been surveyed, so who knows exactly where they are. <laughs> um, and through through package B, we realized that the um, Cavalier building that's inside was treated like it was invisible. Um, so there are viewing points that uh, were projected that were literally looking at a, a brick wall. Um, and so we are uh, in the process of surveying that building to make sure it's considered as part of that. So we're not projecting views from behind a brick wall. That's, that will actually increase building heights in a little bit in, in a couple yeah. of areas. Yeah, I think there would just be advantage to working with the federal government on, on having some sort of information provided in the Citadel for those who visit, that this is a thing. Because otherwise it doesn't really serve anything if people don't recognize why they're there or that it's even there to begin with. No, that's that's a fair point. I'll, you know, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll it's a big that value that our, the city our has. Team that are that are in, in touch with the uh, with the uh, park parks authority in that one because because you're right. It's it's all focused on the heritage and without without kind of acknowledging that hey, the city's actually protecting this right. like, these views that you see from up here. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that would go a long way towards making them a little bit more viable. Any further questions? Hearing none, Ben, thank you for your presentation and for answering all of our questions. Really is yeah, well, Thank you very much for having me and for staying a bit later uh, to, to the, see the presentation and have a bit of a, a bit of a discussion. Cool. That's gonna take us to the end of the meeting, everybody. Um, we have no added items. The date of the next meeting will be August 11th, 2021. It's a couple of weeks away. Do I have a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Tony.